Hey there, and welcome back to Off the Rails, an educational monster train series where we explore content mods for the game to shake things up. In this one, we have a new patch out. I'm not going to be reviewing the changes today, but due in large part to a comment from the previous video, I did include a link below this video to the changelog if you want to look at it. So we are currently playing the unofficial balance patch, a content mod that rebalances the game, and it's something I personally maintain, so I've worked on this for as long as it's been out, and we have a new patch on that. So just to give you an update on the timeline of things, again, because of the way this released and everything, there's kind of the challenge of the order, right? The patch notes review video will be going live this Friday. I'm probably going to be recording it after this one, which means that you will be watching this video on the new patch before I've reviewed them with you. It's going to have to be fine. I don't want to do multiple videos in a day at the moment or anything like that. I think it's better suited to kind of put that in the Friday slot because it's a random slot for random things whenever they come up. And that'll be the, that's the plan this week anyway. So should be pretty straightforward. I'm pretty hyped for it. There are some big changes that I think will be have been sorely needed. Things that I've been thinking through the design of for a long time. And sometimes the changes ended up being real simple because it didn't need much, right? But it needed something. And the time it takes for me to discern what I believe it needs and why, it, it's, it's sizable, right? It's not easy, so... Uh, so we will be continuing on. As I promised, though, we are moving forward with Sentient here. So it should be nice and fun. We're currently on a one win streak. We won with the Hornbreaker Prince. And we had all slays. We had Raffle Prince in front to slay for armor. We had Branded Warrior in the back. Two of them to slay for rage. The buffed stats on Branded Warrior for the slay triggers, as well as the starting stats, were really important to stay ahead of threats like Sap Seraph, and in order to actually generate enough damage for Relentless on, well, just for clearing waves, really, on the Divinity. So, I think that was a really important set of changes. I'm glad to have seen it work, and nothing in that run was tweaked as a result of the patch that just went out, so pretty convenient that it worked out that way. And yeah, we will be continuing with the Sentient, see what we're shown here. Yeah, not much else to report, so I guess this is going to be a ridiculously fast intro, barely even three minutes. So yeah, alright, as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's, let's get this going. Cool. All right, hope you're all doing well today. I'm having a good one. Yeah, I'm having a good one. Work sucks, but you know what? To hell with it. Here I am playing Monster Train. Feels good. It's nice and early in the evening too, which means if with any luck, I might be able to record two episodes, catch myself back up a little on this modded series. I've been recording a number of Cursed Seeds instead, so I'm ahead on that one and behind on this one because I had to wait for the patch to actually come out. But yeah, I think that's all that I have to say there. Let's get in on this. We are ex Default Awoken, so Sentient, with Exile Umbra, with Plink. We have Pushback Talos, Curse Arcus, Sap Seraph, with Wildwood Sap, Making of a Morsel, and Pyre Grow. Let's see. Plinks are cool here, right? They're, yeah, the modded Plinks are nice because they actually are pretty consistent at hitting multiple units because they're not going to double tap unless there's only one enemy present. Oh, volatile Gauge, gross. I don't think there's a universe I click Volatile Gauge with this start. I know, maybe there's a, M, a what is it, a Shadow Siege or something, but no, we're going to click Pyrewall, the responsible take. I do have the pings, which is useful. But I don't necessarily answer the back line. I suppose I should look at the forge first before making that call. We're shown spikes as well as the cultivating setup. Now, this is a modded cultivating, so it gains permanent health, which makes it extremely strong defensively, but completely absent offensively. This usually is very weak early game. 
you need a strong backline element to support that. And you're not going to see it in Umbra, right? With two Umbra banners, especially the one on Ring 2 that lines with the Merchant of Steel. So I never think it's cultivating here. Absolutely not. I think you, slam, you would have to slam the Awoken banner, hope for the best, with no scaling in my start. And yeah, that's bad. We take Bristling then. Spikes it is. Spikes is unmodded. It's a perfectly fine path. Now this does give me some confidence into a 9-2 here, right? I just need to make sure she doesn't die, which I think is possible with the double Wildwood Saps. So I should probably ooh, double Relics. Yikes. So it's really a Relic now or a Relic later. Either one of these could be great. Let's vaguely look ahead so I'm not just slamming things. Temple on ring three. Good, that will matter. Let's see, what else is there? Let's see, Smersion of Steel on ring four. Okay, and then ring five. So mid game is pretty well situated. These are decent steel shops too. One lines up with the removal, one doesn't. It's okay. Let's see, no removal dupes in the mid game. Nah, they're all split up. It's fine. Another steel shop on seven, and then of course on eight. Oh, there is a removal dupe on ring eight with a final three ring temple. A ton of temples here. Interesting. So I'm going to click the Horde now because it theoretically makes me stronger. And then in if I feel ridiculously powerful, I might click the one on ring two, but pretty doubtful. Yeah, we'll take it now. Ooh, buddy. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of good stuff here. Channel Harp with no stings. I thought it was Thornfruit at first. Do you take Channel Harp? Oh, this is actually terrible. What am I talking about? I saw Thornfruit and I got excited, but then it's actually Channel Heart. They look kind of similarly green. Commemorative Spike is terrible. Never click this relic. Infused Mallet. That's hilarious. I'm going to take Channel Heart and I hope we see stings. That is a bad hit. I should always clear the back lines. The question is, do I clear the front lines? I have Pyre Wall. We can bounce these protectors off the Pyre Wall here. It should be okay. Show me a sting, video game. Please and thank you. Yeah, so check this. Plink always hits the back line here. Every time. Excellent news. We may as well play top. No reason not to. I also may as well play the train steward here. And just get sap rolling. I'm never going to redraw it, so fine. Sap. What do you even do here? I mean, you don't do anything except for you make sure Sentient does not die. I should probably play Pyrogro. I don't think there's any card I desperately need to hit, but being able to play four cards is probably valuable. Let me just sink a Train Steward in the middle here. It's fine. It's going to get overrun, but yeah, I mean, it's... Right, it's cool. We take the Miner up top. Yeah, we didn't hit the back line. That's fine. I'm going to actually try to keep my train steward alive up top once he's actually taken damage. Yeah, like I take damage here from this this man, but he bounces off Pyro Wall. We should kill both backs. Yeah, we do. Good. Cool. So I take... Well... Yeah, we don't actually get what we want here. Unfortunately. Fortunately, I could have... I mean, it doesn't matter, actually. It's just, it's just fine, right? It's just bounces off Pyro Wall. But if I leak, it might have been better to put it up top. You could have saved that if I sacked the Lifesteal Morsel, is what I'm thinking about, right? That's the thing. Now, does that matter? Probably not. Like, I mean, we get through this simply based on the raw regen numbers. And the damage from making of a morsels, but it's it's fine. Like you, you can't lose from this position. So I mean it was free. It was a calculated risk, I suppose. We take razor sharp here. Oh my god, but I need this thing. Um that's difficult. I really want this 30 damage thing. Justify my channel heart pick. This card is actually great. Can I give up on Razor Sharp, though? What am I playing here? Great question. 
Do I want an Umber unit? You could take one. I don't really see why not. It's fine. There are some good ones. And if I do that, then I'm going to scale it with Morsels, which is cool. I do have decent Morsel gen with the Miners. Meanwhile, I can use the Wildwood Saps to keep Sentient alive. This, it's tough because this Razor Sharp is almost definitely, cr I should take Razor Sharp. I know I'm giving up Sting, but I think it's fine. Interesting. Prismal Dust, Packed Morsels, and Ember Cash. You'll note that Ember Cash is a common here, which takes the place of Perils of Production for reasons. There's a good reason for it. It's nice, though, because it does five damage to enemies. It's a surprisingly decent backline option that saves some life. Yeah, it's actually pretty decent. If I'm going to the Merchant of Steel, I should click the Act Morsels, though. I think I should, because, well, I could go to the Magic Shop, see a holdover for Razor Sharp, play it into something... I'm going to take the Ember Cache and go right here. Look at an Awoken unit. Yeah, I think that is fine. I think that's good. Because I drafted into a good holdover, I don't feel bad taking this. Permafrost, 20 and consume, and an Ember Stone. I can reroll this. Ah, Animus of Speed. Ooh, but Wilting Sapwood. These are both modded, so that's an interesting one. Excuse me, I'm getting like a reverb in my headset. Let me make sure that I'm not having any problems here. I'm going to mute myself for a hot second. I suppose I could have paused during that period, but I think it's actually just fine and I'm going crazy. It looks like my levels are okay, so whatever, it's cool. Both of these are modded, so let's let's talk about this. Wilting Sapwood has, is more of a hollow than usual. A very interesting choice. It just kind of slaps if you can keep it fully health, like full health. It's a really strong unit, actually. Like genuinely good, if, especially if I can top it off. Huh. Pretty interesting. Meanwhile, Animus of Speed is a surprisingly potent backline with the spikes generation, as long as I can keep her alive. It's also interesting because Wilting Sapwood does not benefit at all from Razor Sharp Edge. It says its attack is equal to its health, which is very interesting. It's a backline that wants to be healed. We could see something like an immortal trade here to keep it topped off is not bad it's a surprisingly devastating early game unit but it falls off when it's getting swept a bunch in the sweeper floor so you want to play it something lower floor usually or with at least enough healing to keep it topped off so it doesn't lose out it benefits a lot from plus 25s plus 25s are huge i mean it's plus 25 health and attack essentially large stone is Technically, really good 40 40. I mean, then it's four space, but still. Interestingly, as well, its infusion gives its ability, which can have some really fun interactions with a lot of different units. I think the correct choice is and the spikes animus, though, because I, I think it's really good here to prop up sentient with more spikes and. We're not in the chase. Yeah, I think it's the Animus here, actually. I'm really interested in this Sapwood, though. Could I make that win? My main concern is that Sentient here is going to be particularly greedy for my heals. And I don't think I can invest as much into Sapwood as I would like to. Yeah, if I didn't have Sentient and I had maybe an Umbra champion, so if I were something like, if you flipped the... We flipped it here, right? You flipped it and we had Primordium instead. I think the Sap would be a really good target for it. You would take, you know, the big HP variant and yeah, we're going to take Animus of Speed here. I think it's good. A really difficult choice, actually. I think both were pretty strong picks. Minus one goes into something here. 
I'm going to put a minus one in a Wildwood Sap, because if I see an X5, just getting, you know, five free Wildwood Saps is insane. And I should chill and reroll it, because I can afford a... Yeah, I can afford it, what I want. Okay, no holdover, but I do see double stack for the Wildwood Sap, and I care a lot about that. This carries the early game and is valuable later. Still worth we can't lose from this position, basically. It's impossible for me to lose. Even into Sweet Boss, we lose our backline, but Sentient carries with that much regen. How greedy can I be? I think I take the Horde here. Yeah, I think the Horde is super chill. Now, Mindjax, really good. I can set up this Animus of Speed with some upgrades and then have two of them generate an incredible amount of space it solves top floor divinity very well because you don't play there you play mid we should set up pretty quickly i'm gonna take that that's good i'm glad to have seen it that's 30 shards in a ring too but i basically cannot lose and i have pyre wall so yeah it's mark of invasion here i only have one animus and it's free i'm pretty confident yeah especially with this draw we Plink first, because I want the morsel. Sure. Value. And we take the sap here, and we send this morsel to oblivion. Yeah, this is going to be good. Sweet. Great. The one damage sentient is what kills the collector. We, You'll love to see it. We just kind of play a bunch of regen here, and we send train stewards and it's fine the spikes will eventually kill animus of speed but she's not actually that important here right she's not a critical component of this run i want to put razor sharp into sentient here it clobbers that that's a terrifying floor holy crap we got a priest and a redirector upgrade on one floor That's unfortunate. We definitely kill the Redirector, and I think we will deal with the Forge Disciple. I'd like to draw cards, though, so we don't play the Pyrogro here. I'm going to work on the Spell Shields, at least. Yeah, good. Okay. I think that's fine. We're going to take something onto the Pyre Wall here, but it's okay. Yeah, it's Sweet Boss anyway, so, I mean, there's no universe where Animus of Speed survives. We, we leak the middle. And it's just fine. With 17 regen, this thing is cool. Sure, no problem. Five bounces off the wall. I take a making of a morsel here. Definitely, I'm going to ember cash away the spikes on the mid floor. And with this money stats, I mean, we win. There's, there's no universe we don't. Yeah, it's fine. Right, like, I mean, it's there's no way you lose here. 16 regen is too many rounds, so... Like, this dude stands no chance. Cool. Great. Go team. Razor sharp. Ooh, a sharpen that actually doesn't suck. One cost, huh? You, you know what? I think so, actually, right? Maybe? It's tough because I want those spikes on the front line. Is it just vine grasp for a ping? I think it is. It's actually just vine grasp for a ping here. Yeah. No sharpen today. Engine upgrade. Jeez, so many things. So much ember. I missed the sting, by the way. I gave up. I gave up razor sharp edge for a sting. And I just did it to myself. I'm going to take packed morsels here. It's a good burst of stats that I like. Merchant of Magic. I could still see a holdover, and that's fine. What Umbra unit could they show me that I would want? It's a little interesting. I suppose we can look, actually. Maybe? What am I going to do? Upgrade another Wildwood Sap? I don't need the Pyre Health. I'm going to go look at the Horde, actually. I think there could be a lot of value here. Cheater's Hand. Winged Indulgence is actually interesting, but... You want to make sure enemies in the mid-game hit you so they die on spikes. What does Cheater's Hand let me do that I care about? Anything? 
I should take it, but I don't think I... I actually think Winged Indulgence is pretty good, right? Minimize damage taken by the Sentient. They're not bad. They're both fine. I don't think they're excellent. Is the thing. I'm going to take Winged Indulgence in case I leak stuff. It's okay. This is a real bad take if on Ring 4 I see the... What are they called? Absolvers. I know I'm fighting the Curse Arcus, so I'm seeing them there, but I think it's okay. Shadow Eater's not terrible, but I'm not going to put Animus of Speed in front. Collector is... Again, I, I mean, I don't know what I expected to see, but it's not really these that I wanted here. I was looking at that horde more than anything. A minus two? Not really. Purge? Hacked? No. Show me an X5. Oh, minor refraction into Animus of Speed? Sure, absolutely, actually. This is great news. And now I'm looking for... I mean, this is literally multi-strike, right? You just make more of them. So I'm looking for a plus 25 to toss on this thing now. Yeah, cool. So you should really look at that minor refraction and be like, yeah, that's a multi-strike. It's like I saw a multi-strike in that event, basically. You make more of them, and then you play more of them behind the sentient. So I miss a hell vent in exchange for the Merchant of Steel. I go to the Merchant of Steel on ring five. And then I dupe the hell vented on ring four. So I hey, what this we second one, third one on ring six, which is one, two, five space taken on mid. I could still even play a morsel or I could put four of them on the floor. Good grief. Yeah, that's what we do. We just make four of these things and generate an incredible amount of spikes that way. Cool, actually. And we chill on 30 shards here, no problem. I need to see an infusion for her, by the way. What would I take? Something Awoken, almost certainly. This is pushback, which means I would like morsels that do something here. Hmm, I'm going to play mid because I can use, I can use train stewards to chump block, right, is the real trick here. And I'm going to put attack on sentient here, which I think is correct. And these all basically die, again, plink sadly into pushback Talos with armor. I guess I could have played my two damage, but whatever. Okay, not ideal. I want to make sure I draw a train steward next turn. It's tough, right? It is difficult. We deal with all these foot soldiers no problem. This is how much? 50, so 13 HP. I mean, it bounces one off the pyro wall. I don't really care. I kill one train steward bottom floor. It's okay fine because it drains a lifesteal there. She goes middle. I need to handle this turn. Okay, not ideal. In fact, quite subpar. He's taking 44 here. It's tough. I think I have to play Wildwood Sap. The Miner, unfortunately... He's always getting played, but it never tanks enough here, is the problem. It would need to be, have been a 6 HP -er in order to actually do this. But, alright, it's unfortunate, but I think we have to play the sap at least. And the restore? Mm, maybe not the restore. I mean, this is just going to be three that bounces off Pyrewall. I think the stats are going to matter more than anything here. So, sure. Pyrewall doing a ton of work. It's fine. Actually, the Pact Morsels here is pretty big. Except the lady. She sweeps. Oh, my God. It's, it's doomed. All these excellent morsels, and they all just die because I did a terrible job. Whatever, I'll feed them all downstairs. Make my man huge. 
Sure, he dies, it doesn't matter. It's not Pyrogro here, I don't believe. I need to draw cards. Yeah, fine. Come middle again, please. Please? Okay, well, that's not great. We're gonna put a train steward in front now. Oh man, Ember Cash just saved me a ton on top. Put some under thresholds that matter. We're playing a train steward in front, and it's just gonna have to be fine. I need the Animus of Speed to swing is the problem. And I can afford the hits, right? Six damage. I'm taking exactly six here. So if I don't lose, we're fine. It's true. Let's see, nine. She's going to be at 16. If I give her one restore, she gets an extra swing, so we'll do that. And I'm going to keep the sap going into the sentient, because she is the one that really matters here. We bounce exactly off Pyrewall here, and then two extra... Ah, Vine Grasp. Big brain. We don't look great here, admittedly. It's not pretty. Let's see, 20, she takes two hits and then dies. What is the choice here? I mean, we don't lose is the important point. We're gonna get it on the top floor, or not on the top floor, but you know what I mean, the, the pyre, right? We do six hits, I, mean, I need to do something here. Two rounds are wasted in the back. A region in front does nothing, right? He go she goes to 21 and then 22, essentially, so it's no more hits. So we have to put it in the back. That is a sizable improvement, at least. I think it takes us out of death range. We'll take the planks from this position. Don't be greedy. Sure. It ain't great, but it's something. Again, it ain't great, but we're down to 36. Oh my god. Foo buddy. Is there any way I can squeeze some numbers out of this? I was hoping for I don't know what. Oof. Well, we're alive. Right? That's four hits, 20 damage a pop. Yeah, all right, fair enough. One HP, okay? It's the most important HP. All right, I don't want to hear it. I just do not want to hear it. Pyrewall saved the run, by the way. I... Wow. That pushback nearly killed me. What could you have done differently? Just don't even play Animus of Speed until the second draw through, maybe? I didn't draw a train steward on the right turn. And she only went to that floor once. Ah, uh, alright, fair enough. I don't think Umberstone is going to be the hit of import here. Furnace tap, freeze it. I probably should do this. Makes my steel magic shops a little better. Okay. Interesting. We do see the updated Husk Hermit, which did happen in this patch. It gives us a revenge trigger. Is that actually ever important here? Not really. Not really. Not with a spikes front line. We could put the sentient on a lower floor and then play the hermit in front of the animus of speed. It's not bad, right? It's not great but it's not bad we could also play a woken hollow in front of animus of speed right it is just fine that's actually probably it right you play sentient bottom you take a woken hollow and three animus of speeds in the back i think so actually right yeah i think so okay fine i oof I need to draw cards, I think, but Ember's pretty important here. 
I mean, unfortunately, we are still at 16 life thanks to Pyrewall. So it's not absolutely doomed if I have to leak a curse or something. I think it is... Is it Ember? What am I doing? Everything's pretty cheap. Draw power is pretty good, actually, because of the Pyre Grow. I'm going to take Draw here. Up to 31. Seems okay. I need to take the dupe here. I need the extra power, and the pyre health is particularly strong. We're also not taking any additional... What is the word? Any additional shards here? Spikes too, by the way. For sure. Need to make sure I'm working on this. We dupe the Animus of Speed here. She's tiny. It's good. Even if she's not fully upgraded... Yeah, fine. Don't take that money, we chill. Heaven Seal's a great way to die. A great, very excellent way to lose the run. I would love this relic. How do you get through this if one of them is upgraded on turn one? Let's say it's sentient animus animus and the back one is upgraded. How do you assemble that floor? The two animus kill the front one, and then the back one just walks and you lose. You cannot take Heaven's Seal here. No way. Like, it might be okay. I mean, it's actually just perfectly fine because, hey, look, the Light Harnessers are here, and they're not upgraded on turn one, but it really, it's, it's tough. I don't know. I could fit them all on top, right? Three and then two Animus. It's not bad. It's a little slow. I think I need to play top here. In which case it's Antumbra, Antumbra, Awoken Hollow, play the other one bottom. And then we put a Train Steward middle. Yeah, true. We'll be okay out of this system now. We play Animus 1, Animus 2. I never get through to the Collector, sadly. I take a Miner into the Sentient. It's fine. Sure. Alright, I think we're going to be fine here. Right, I think we need to start the restores up top or the regen triggers anyway get some spikes going right store restore hmm what if I pull the priest forward he gets shot the next one gets shot and killed and then the last one walks on me and hits me once. I think it's actually significantly better to do this, right? Yeah, it's perfect, actually. The Clip Defender, I really need to... Man, you think I needed the pull there, too, but... Because they're gonna kill him. And then we're gonna rely on spikes to not die. It ain't pretty. I'm glad I didn't take the frickin'... Oof. I'm glad I didn't take the bloody trial. If I draw five cards, am I okay? Yeah, these cards aren't actually that important. So we take this. I'm gonna plank middle because, I don't know, maybe it does something. Ugh. Oh, gross. Pyrewall, thank you. I mean, like, these are the best cards they could have shown me here. It's fine. We do at least kill the Light Harnesser here. But we're going to get beaten the hell up by the one in the back. Just absolutely sandblasted to eight life. It's tough, man. It is... It's tough. Pull the Porcupine forward. Whew, buddy, it's not great. Yikes. Alright, well, we're not dead. Thank goodness for respecting... <laughs> Jeez. Thank goodness for respecting this combat, though. We're gonna win the Relentless fight, at least. 
All right. Great job. Go team. Hey, look, we did it. I need refracting lens or something, man. I... Oof. We have eight life. 43 damage taken. Not pretty. Preserved thorns with channel heart is really, really good. Perils of production. Do I ever lean that way? I could. I have the furnace tap. It's good to see it now. Cave in. Ember drain one. Friendly units and daze two to enemies. It's not bad. I don't want them. I want them to attack into the spikes, though. Right. I do want them to do that. Perils is okay here. But I am going to the steel shop here. I pretty much have to, right? I need to upgrade this thing and then I, in time for the next dupe. I think so. All right, so... Perils, and then I'm seeing no magic shop for a while. Yeah, we don't take that. I might actually just be excavation eruption here. It's a decent hit. Yeah, I will take excavation eruption. I need to not lose... This is interesting because we're really suffering in a line that I never play in the base game because it does not exist. I must go to the left, I believe. I think that is a true statement. I'm looking for a plus 25 into one of these. Yeah, sure. That's good. I'm looking for 10 in spikes into Awoken Hollow. Sure, sure. No endless here. We'll reroll. Multi-strike into one of them is really strong. I'll need to find a way for this thing to not die horribly in attacking into spikes, but... It's pretty good. I should do that. Like, I need to take this here. I just do. Wait a second. What if I did... Awoke... Wait, hold up, hold up. Let's think through this. What if I sacrifice the Awoken Hollow and I put it on this Animus of Speed? It takes it to two speed and it becomes my front line? Does that... Now... Wait, what? I could do this behind Sentient again, right? That is enough stats. It hits twice. This is it, right? My mid-floor has... Think it through. My mid floor is six space. So it would be sentient. One, two, three, four, five. And then I would dupe the small one again. Instead of the big one. Or I could take two of the big ones here and throw away the bad one. I think it really is this. Genuinely. I think we need to do it's not a Hail Mary, but I think it's a really important play. Yeah, okay. Minus two. It's really good. Minus two. Intrinsic. If I put intrinsic on anything, it's on preserved thorns. I need to evaluate how strong I am here. I know I just spent 25 gold on that Awoken Hollow, but I was not anticipating the multi strike hit. So I think it's an okay sacrifice. I need to remove cards. I must become stronger right now. To buy two removals into train stewards. I'm gonna look in the caverns now. Monster rail spike, spell rail spike, burn a plank. Or I can burn another train steward. I think I'm gonna take the train steward here. It's fine. This will be more impactful and it removes a thing anyway. Sure. We're not on our last legs, but we are risking a lot here. I would very much like the minus two on excavation eruption. We could eventually put a tenon piercing on this and this actually becomes pretty potent. I think I can't go harder on shards though. I cannot risk the leaking here. Yeah, I think we actually have to chill at 55 as much as I would like that. This is a very strong floor we've assembled on this and we don't actually need to see anything in the way of steel shops again. I just need dupes. Yeah. My six base floor in the middle could just be two of these Awoken Hollow ladies because now she has multi-strike again. It's pretty decent actually, right? And if I have spare heals, it's interesting. 
right? I could dupe the small animus and have a very similar effect without having to remove my old one, which I think is just objectively superior actually, right? This is Ancient Hate with Sycophants of Seraph. This is really bad. Right, this is actually terrible because my quick means I attack the sycophants on turn two. So I would love to take this, but I think I need to be able to plink that floor. And, you know, excavation eruption or something. We're playing middle. Who's surprised? I will plink. Sure, great news. Go team. Is it... Higher grow. Draw two fewer cards. Maybe. It's not bad. I think I should take it. It's a good turn for it of all the turns. Because we're forced to... Yeah, we're forced to do a lot of good stuff here. So it's... We clean the floor up, which is great. I must excavation eruption bottom. Honestly, beautiful. Really good hit. And that's why you can't take that spell shield, right? No chance. Because now, the 20 swings in the sycophant, and I play the multi-strike one behind, and she swings into the guardian. I can take wildwood sap on this floor, and I'm going to put it into the hollow in the back. It actually will self-buff here, which is pretty nifty. It is just stats at this point. I pretty much only care about... What is it? The stores in the back here, they self-buff. I know it's weird, but I think it's really good. We play Making of a Morsel and then Link Bottom. Or I think we just send the trains through it, actually. Yeah, we clear it. Good. It's all because of that excavation eruption. And now all the enemies are in the front, so I think we're fine. Yeah, now we get it. It's cool. Just gonna sting the front dude down below. Excellent. This is a really weird looking floor, right? Like, she's taking hits in the front. I need to play the big Wildwood Sap on the Sentient. Because I'm not getting extra regen procs on the back from the Sap on her. I'll blink bottom, sure. Take the Ember, it's fine. I'll kill another one. Sure, it's fine. Nice thing about doing it this way is the defenders now attack, which is good. Cool. Snap into sentient. Good. I proc. Restores in the back. I take a packed morsel. Take the lifesteal here. Really good into the sentient. Urge the train steward. Give it some crap. And then I actually take the ember cache here as well. Very good. I plink, sure, why not? Yeah, we're fine. I think we're actually super okay into this combat. We sting front. It's interesting. If I plink bottom, it was 15. It's always going to die to spikes. And so it's making of a morsel middle. I want the stats. I will play restore front here. It matters. Now, the question is... It attacks once, twice, three times. I mean, the problem is it's 40 life here, right? 39 is the number to beat. If I... I don't know what you do is you plank and then you play the morsel in front. Good. Cool. And the 2 HP is not going to matter in the back, so we are fine putting the Razor Sharp in. We should get through this no more damage. That's my take here. Yeah, it's free. Okay, it's not free, but it's good. We'll take it. Sure. Seems okay to me. It's a lot of spikes damage, too. Okay, so we're doing all right. And Graft is really good, but Focused Growth, I think, is better. Draw Power and Big Heal. And Graft is nice. I do have a Rejuvenate Trigger, which is good. 
take the focus growth, I think. I want to have the ember for this, and I need the draw power. Oh, interesting. Seeing some good stuff. Modded Ember Forge showing me extra morsels, and it's only two space. It's not terrible, but I don't want it. Kindle. That's a good one, too. Double my current Ember. Kind of interesting. I don't... You could get a lot of payouts for this if I see a good X cost, like an Awoken's Rail Spike or something at this point. I don't think it's necessary. It has Permafrost, too, which is good. It's not an X cost anymore, and there's a reason for that, because the Permafrost enabled too many really, really strong combos, and this way I think it's a little more metered. I forgot to mention, but Excavation Eruption hits four times again. Does five less damage. I don't think I use these here. Emberforge is cute. If I could slot it in somewhere, it's actually not terrible, but I don't think I can. It just dies on any floor, pretty much, and it never fits middle, so... Yeah, sorry. Sorry about it, I'll take my money. Divine Artifact can be really, really good here. I think I am taking one of these. Power me up for a really important combat, Arcus. Ooh, Divine Emblem of the Exiles is a free win of Relentless, right? It just is. Yeah, we do this. Divine Emblem of the Exiles is humongous. Really good hit, really good hit. I will take another dupe. As I was discussing, look at the horde first. Thorn fruit channel heart. Oh, but the sinner's salve. I, I think thorn fruit channel heart is too strong to skip here. Too strong. We're gonna look at the caverns first in case I see an overstack. Let's build a card. Don't mind if I do. Armor's not terrible, it's temporary health. You could do sap. I don't think it's that, though. I could do Rage. Rage buff would be fine. It is just bonus damage, I suppose. I don't think it's Sap here. And Armor is... Maybe if it were Armor Heal, it'd be good for the Sentient, good for other random things. I'll click Armor. I think it's more valuable. Yeah, Armor Heal is pretty good here, actually. Ascend. Armor, heal, ascend. I don't think we ever get an overstack. It's very easy to assemble here with this. Pull? Pull something to the front? I mean, it would just be for sentient. Is this card even worth taking? I'm not actually sure. I was hoping for money, honestly. I would have loved it then. I don't think you click one of these, because I the ascend, descend is a problem. You play middle for the... Mind Jacks, and I can't play this on Sentient anymore. Yeah, we leave it. And then, honestly, 1 for 20 with Armor 10 is not great. Like, I mean, it's, what, it's Focus Growth, but with a worse... Yeah, I'm gonna not take it. I don't want that card. Sorry, bud. Shame. We now must decide on the Hellvent. We could Hellvent the big one. That hits four times on the floor, right? That does mean I probably need to take space coming up. Just maybe okay, because you take space, you have seven on mid floor, and then you can play the sentient two multi striking animuses and then the one bigger one. The only real problem is. The, well, the real, the real problem here is the Awoken Hollow Essence is kind of bad on the second one, right? I'm almost never healing the floor big enough for this to matter. It's good on one of them, because I want to get value out of my heals on turns where I don't need to do something else. What if we dupe Wildwood Sap? Is that good? Yeah, what if we do the big Wildwood Sap here, and then I dupe the Animus of Speed on Seraph? How does that sound? I guess we'll look at the temple and think. Plus 30. Intrinsic. Honestly, with the Pyre... I could put Pyre Grow out turn 1, because I'll have the Thorn Fruit to offset the draw oddness. 
A plus 30 is probably pretty good in Excavation Eruption or just in a random heal card, actually. No more infusions on this run. Yeah, true. Okay, so fine. Now, the real question there, though, is the is the regen better on Sentient now? We're free winning into Arcus, so I kind of have a free pass here thanks to the Divine Emblem of the Exiles, but I need to think about Ring 7, and the regen's not bad for it, right? The main problem with my current setup is that I cannot fit all three Animus on the floor with the Sentient right now. At 7 space, I will only have 6. Yeah, I mean, I could reasonably just send one away and then have it as cleanup. I'm going to dupe the, scent, the Awoken Hollow Animus here. I think the extra hit is important enough. And we can just take space because I don't need energy. I have Pyrogro. I don't need draw. I hit Thornfruit. So I want the extra hit for faster spikes buildup, basically. And if any of them take damage from spikes themselves or sweep or something, then I can heal them and they gain rejuvenate triggers and it's okay. I think this is really a good power jump for us. I'm going to take it, yeah. All right, 70. Let's make sure we can go to the Divinity. I can easily catch up on that here. I'm going to dupe the Wildwood Sap almost certainly. Take space now. Get five Animus of Speed hits per turn. We should be okay not taking anything here. Although if I take the Pyrogro, it's really good. Getting that out right away. It's true. That is really strong, just getting that out right away. This is fine, I believe. Yeah, it's fine. We'll take it. Go to 80 here. That's that's valuable enough. We'll move on from this position. 80 is acceptable in Arcus. I feel pretty confident here. I'd give it like a 90%. Cool. So we do... Sentient... Multi-Striker, Multi-Striker, Pyrogro, Sting, Making of a Morsel, we play it on the bottom. This thing gains 10 life hilariously. We accept the first turn curse, but it's offset because we have the Ember we just took. I play Animus of Speed on the bottom. She eats that. We Sting one of them. She kills the other. This is the Hellborn Harvest. Yep. I don't think I... Hmm. I save my regen, maybe? Save the big burst for later? Possibly. Pretty likely, actually. Stick a trained steward in front. I realize it takes a lot of the stats here, but I actually think it's fine. And then what? We plank? Sure. It's fine. I do need things to walk up. The stealth is annoying here. Razor Sharp Edge, good. And... Right, you're immediately seeing the struggle of Absolver doing zero damage. But I think it will still be okay. Oh, Double Life Steal is pretty decent here. We can keep this Train Steward alive for a while. A rally Shard, so we Sting on the bottom. I should probably take the Restores in the back here just stat up it doesn't really matter they, they gain stats equally and we'll stay we'll save the wildwood sap for now yeah we'll stick it out it's fine okay should be all right the top floor shard now we clean this up pretty comfortably which is really promising i wish to pull the absolver forward although it doesn't matter which ember cash it actually never mind and I'm going to send Stings into Arcus here. Just absolutely blast them for damage. Take a Restore in the back. Sure. Seems good to me. If I actually had Emblem of the Exiles, this would be really strong. It's true. It is very true. Again, I just want to take Restores into the back units. It is slow scaling, but it's something. 
And three turns. Ooh, that's a lot of stings, huh? We'll accelerate through this. I think the next time we draw the double stacker, we play it. Yeah. I may as well not shirk on my plink duties. It's fine. A lot of good spikes. Bottom floor is doing surprisingly well in addition, so it's just fine. I mean, I'm gonna sting the hell through this, right? We just absolutely blast these dudes. We sting again. Take stats where we can get them. We do 17 to Arcus. Sure. I do not play Furnace Tap here. Right, I do not. Not yet. I should see it again. Do I actually? Two rounds. Then he goes Relentless. And then a third round and he goes Middles. Three rounds. Do I redraw my 30 card deck fast enough here? I'm going to play the Furnace Tap actually. It's fine. Sure. I think it's actually super correct to do so. Because we should see, yeah, one of these dudes. Excavated Ember is huge value. Take the regen now. I continue stinging the hell out of this man. I pull the Shaman forward here to kill it. Good. Take the Entumbra Morsel. And what's better, Razor Sharp or Restore? I mean, Razor Sharp, right? Just always. It's good. Cool. We should also see another Excavated Ember here. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Cool. We just sting the crap out of Arcus. We do a surprising amount of damage on this floor, which is really interesting to me. That is a 224 damage floor. If I put a morsel in front, take it to another slam. Sure. Seems good to me. I think we will get through mid floor here. Thanks in large part to the Emblem of the Exiles. Yeah, see it here, right? The 102 damage, right? Wildwood Sap helps a bunch. I think the Razor Sharp is stronger here. Yeah, it is. Even though the number goes up because the regen ticks weird. It's fine. I think this was carried pretty heavily by... What was it? That Divine Emblem of the Exiles? Proud Spike? Am I ever taking Spreading Spores here? It's very slow. And it floods my deck, which is already being flooded. I don't think it's Shroud Spike. Yeah, I don't think so. We're going to skip these. We take space here because I wish to be able to fit that last dude on the floor. And I go left. I don't need the Steel Shop for anything. Removals are fine, but it's okay. Power Health's probably better. Hold over on what? Hold over Razor Sharp. Pretty good. Pretty good. Dark Forge spikes three. I Means 120 life. I should take this. Yeah, I should click this. Yeah, for sure. Caverns first. Not that it really matters. Oh, Nexus spike in the late game. Says what? I could have done holdover perils, by the way. It does exist on this run. I maybe should have considered grabbing it. Just in case. It's true. Probably should have done that. That's fair. Fair enough, friends. Fair enough. I could make a Wildwood Sap Wildwood Sap here for basically a double stack Wildwood Sap, pretty much. You could do something with Furnace Tap, I suppose. Is Burnest, I mean, if they show me another double stack, I get a 20 regen. Yeah, you get a 20 regen Nexus Spike. I mean, this is my survivability in Relentless. I think it is just correct, right? Makes super, super Wildwood Sap. Yeah, honestly, this is fine. It's fine. We now Divine Temple Spell Chain. Very interesting decisions to make their hold over. On what? Razor Sharp's not bad. Right? It's okay. I don't know if it's great, but it's okay. 
That's a toughie. It's tough because... Are we fast enough? I hit five times, generating two spikes each for the whole floor. It's too bad I don't have a Bramble Lash or something. If we see Gnarled Root, this is really powerful. If we don't, it's tough. Petrified Crucible would help. I mean, we have 40 spikes to start, so per round we're gaining 10 spikes to the whole floor. And then so we'll be at 60 on turn two of the Divinity when the first wave walks up, which should be able to mow down the other dudes. I think this Razor Sharp is good. We're going to draw enough. I may as well take it. It's value enough to me. And I can still reroll this and do some stupid things with Nexus Spike if they show it to me. I should probably put a plus 10 in Excavation Eruption. Probably. I'm going to save my cash, though. Yeah, double stack into this Nexus Spike now represents a an obscene 20 regen drop. And then we dupe this now. <laughs> yeah, bud. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's good. That is, as we say, strong. Great job. Go, go team. Go, go gadget 20 regen. And I take 20 and consume into a plank to get rid of it. I spent all my cash, but it was good. It was good. Purge Stone is probably the best hit since I am now duping a non-shard card on ring 8. I'm looking at how much regen. I mean, we're sitting at a cozy 35 regen on the front. That's a lot, especially since our back lines that are doing damage are quick. I'm going to take the spell, the purge stone in the plank here. I think it is correct to do so. I don't want to see these cards. Can we move on? Yes. True, we're good for the moment. Does this win? That is an excellent question. One of the funnest things for me about the the unofficial balance patch is I actually am significantly worse at it. It's easy to look at these cards and be like, oh, they're straight buffs. Obviously, they win, but I don't really have a great sense for is this strong enough? I mean, this is a spike scaling line. I have no clue if I can make spikes work like this. I feel strong. Am I? Great question. I feel... I mean, do we kill these enemies? I have no clue. Can I take this trial? How scared am I? It's a great question. Truly. I have good stings. They help. It's Conduit Masters at 90, though. You could just get double upgrades on turn one, and then you just eat it. You just get absolutely sent to the Shadow Realm. And you don't really have an answer to it, right? You just lose. Ah, that's tough. I mean, 520 playing on mid floor. How scared am I? I don't need anything from the steel shop, but I give up possibly seeing something cool from the Merchant of Trinkets in exchange for this. And I also give up a removal. But I could just get killed is the problem. You can just die on turn one. Is the armor going to change it? I mean, yeah, though, right? The upgraded conduit has, what, 20 life? And it walks up at 40? I mean, I guess it still dies on the sentient. And then what if we get an upgraded gilded wing? It's 290. I mean, it just hits me for good grief. That's... 40 damage into 290 is 8 hits. Good, I mean, 8 hits at 10 is, is 80 damage to me. I mean, he literally kills me. Right. The extra 20 armor doesn't matter. If we get, I think if we get a ring 1, a, a turn 1 upgraded Gilded Wing, we just lose anyway. So I'm going to take the armor trial. This is a little bit of a Hail Mary, but just don't hit, just don't hit bad. All right, well... This is terrible. Holy crap. Well. 
I think we die. I sting this and hope for the damn best. I'm going to take the focus growth. Draw nine cards. <laughs> I, I think I was going to lose to this Gilded Wing no matter what, basically. Right? Is the thing. And the threshold at the hit on top is 320. He has 310 right now. This is a horrible roll. I mean, I think we're dead. We're just super dead. Okay. Do I play... Oof. So, what is the lesson here? I mean, I, there's no way I killed this guy. No universe I killed this dude. Maybe I see preserved thorns. Maybe I just send furnace tap. I have no clue. How do you win this? I think playing Pyrogro is a bait. I need to see more cards. So I think we drop it and we move and we just pray. Okay, I do see both of these things. We're doing 84 here? Wow. We play both Animus of Speeds and it is surprisingly powerful. Wow, actually, you play the plank? Sure, fair enough. This is, that's 170 damage. He might not kill me now. Let me take a restore somewhere. Is there ever a unit? I mean, it doesn't matter. It actually heals this. It does the same one no matter what, which is very interesting. Huh. I guess it prioritizes the front one if they're the same. Is it Wildwood Sap here to save the Sentient? No, I don't think... I think we need this 2 damage. I mean, it doesn't do anything, but it's fine. Am I dead? He hits me 4 times for 40. I sting him, and he hits me one less time. It's true. Right, because Ember Cash actually gets another hit on the Gilded Wing, so we do sting him for one less. I need to keep the Sentient alive here, and I will just take the Regen Trick, because it does some damage. I take 30, it looks like. Oh, no, it's actually less. It's 27, so I'm alive. Wow, I guess this was actually stronger than I expected. Good turn for Preserve Thorns. I mean, we kill up top with the Sting. I take the Razor Sharp in back, and I have to play the Nexus Spike, or I think she just dies. This Winged Conduit actually does zeros to me up top, so I take the Preserve Thorns middle, and we just kind of kill units, I think. Huh. This is... Stronger than I expected. Yeah, I mean, wow. We we just send it. This dude... Huh. Wow, actually. Take the focus growth here. Good. Sting, play. Good. Play, plink. Sure, why not? The top unit doesn't matter. So we kind of ate 12, but we're actually strong in an unbelievable twist of fate. You know, I, I say that a lot. You know, the unbelievable twist of fate. But genuinely here, I... Thought I would be dead. I saw that Gilded Wing and I just did not anticipate us doing enough damage to resolve it. I mean, I have 32 regen in the front here. I have an upcoming Excavated Ember, but really the most important card to play is Furnace Tap here, so we take it. And then I just, what, sting the hell out of the boss here to make sure I draw it? What a weird run. I mean, I think we get through it, thanks in large part to absolutely hyper-massive stats. <laughs> yeah. Actually, very true. Oh my god. This is even with the multi-strike that we're not addressing, because the conduit does one. Wow. Wow, yeah, I mean, we, we do enough damage, even 
Wow, we do enough damage on that floor, huh? Maybe this wins. I will take an engraft from this position, yeah. It's just a plus two, plus two, gain one ember, replace itself, good card. And I don't think I need cannibalize, kindle, or ember forge again. So we move on. Does this win? Maybe. I mean, if I dupe that Nexus Spike, we're sitting on like 50 regen. I'm doing it. I think it's correct. I'm going to remove two planks because they are... Compl I guess I should get rid of Train Steward. I can just get him killed though, right? Plink is a worse card. True. True. Merchant of Trinkets. Root Split Mask would be great, but I have to set up on middle. Shame. I do need 10 shards here. 10 in piercing. I guess. Right? I need to take the lowest number of shards humanly possible. You could do plus 30 and then graft. It's really good, actually. Just a solid huge heal into something. I actually think that's way stronger, right? Although 10 and piercing ember cache is an acceptable slam. 10 and piercing excavation eruption is a bit of a gamble, but it does hit four times. And vine grasp. Vine grasp already kills as long as I have a sting, right? You just pull it forward and then sting it. So I don't care about that. I'm going to do the plus 30 heal on engraft here. This is excellent. I'll go to 105 for that. And then I'm duping. Where is it? Nexus spike. That's a lot of that's a lot of regen. True. True enough. I should buy a removal probably, but I think I spin this trinket shop first. Chain of gems, that's not it, right? Like I'm not playing enough units. Roll it. The refined void is interesting, actually. Right? Refined void is two self-cultivates it's actually not that good i mean it's what like plus four plus four for 210 it might be sap tap it might just be a bunch of removals though i've gotten rid of okay we're getting rid of this last plank actually that's definitely going never anything in there in the steel shop i could still buy a sap tap what do i value more and what do i even remove I mean, it's probably a restore, maybe. Or it's actually one of these making of a morsels next. I'm not playing the morsels anywhere. So is removing the morsel better than a potential extra draw? That's a great question. I actually think I would rather not have the extra draw because of a, two, a few reasons. If it's a regen that triggers it, I draw at the end of my turn, so it actually goes up against generating stings and having my card draw next turn. And if it's not on regen, then I'm playing a restore, and I don't have a lot of ember to just play stuff anyway. Now, eventually, it maybe draws me a sting, which is pretty good, but I think the removal is just stronger. Accelerate yourself through. I'm literally never playing is making of a morsel. At least I can send a train steward and it consumes, right? It goes away. Yes. True. 100. You know what? I could actually just straight up upgrade this champion train steward. It's the only thing I could even do here. Sure, dude. Sure. Here's a battle stone. And here's a plus 10. Yeah, 1043. All right, bud. Let's go. Okay, 105 out of 100. Am I confident? No. I have no clue how this performs, but we're going to find out together. Let's go beat up Seraph. You know, doesn't he actually completely destroy my ability to hit? He might. His sap might actually just murder me, now that I'm thinking about it a little bit. Am I going to lose to sap Seraph? More likely than you think, <laughs> unfortunately. Maybe this train steward is actually my secret tech. You play him on top floor. <laughs> I mean, it could be, right? It could be. We could solve it with an Animus off-floor. 
but that really slows me down. No, we're going to play everything on floor, and I am going to... Yeah, we play everything on floor, and I want to now play the train steward that I just created up top and sting anything he spawns up there or that gets up there. I may as well play this Nexus Spike while I have the Ember for it. 20 regen, it's not going away, it's Sap Seraph, it is good. Sure, I am concerned. Right, we are concerned by this. Train Steward must come down, I believe. Hey look, making of a mor the packed morsels finally get value. Train Steward, he's unstoppable. It's unbelievable. I could save some life into the Sentient. I don't know if it matters, really. I would actually much rather draw two more cards next turn. Accelerate around a bit. Sure, every Rejuvenated Weld is useful to offset this. You ready to see Mr. Train Steward just, like, hard carry the run? Okay, well, he didn't really care, I suppose. He being... Set Mr. Seraph. I mean, we clear the floor. Just play the region out, I suppose. I must play these Awoken Hollow restores to the best of my ability. And I think... That's a big Dark Wings, huh? I think I play the Stings here. We just send it on this dude on bottom to get him to a killable level. Sure. Go top, please. Thank you. Genius. Look at this man. He's so strong. We take Razor Sharp, Sting. I take the Nexus Spike here and the Wildwood Sap. I actually just Vine Grasp up top to save a little bit there. And we take the Restore. Sure. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, give me Sap on top floor again. You genius. This train steward is insane. He is too strong. Big heal up front. Love to see it. Sting, 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 sting. I believe that gets through. Yeah, true. I could... I don't know. My sentient is fine. I'm going to instead excavation eruption up top to save Mr. Steward. And then I will take the focused growth in a back unit. Big draw, big draw. I think we're doing okay. We have 76 spikes here, right? It's actually really good. Just sting this floor and we kill everything. It's kind of wild how strong this feels. Is this actually secretly busted? We have 50 regen, by the way. It's a large number. If I Ember Cache, I would like to work through this damage shield is the thing. So I think I will Ember Cache here and do one ping of that damage shield off. And I think he goes up top here for the final round. Genius. This, this train steward has genuinely carried the run. Absolute mad lad. You Vine Grasp up top. I... Oh, we actually pop off that damage shield with the train steward even. Now, I am in a position where I can play this furnace tap or I can wait to redraw it. I think we wait to redraw it genuinely. We sting middle. Yeah, I think we wait to redraw this. I'm going to take the excavation eruption bottom. Good. We regen in front. I mean, 50 regen is enough to win this, right? And here's the question. I do take a slap here. A slap being this Gilded Wing walks by me, I believe. I get to double sting him next turn. Triple sting him because of the plus nine draw. It's true. That is an option. Right, because we don't generate a thorn fruit here is the trick. So I get two stings at least, which is 60 to 239. I would need to draw two additional stings in order to actually kill. Or I play Furnace Tap instead. I think I honestly play Furnace Tap instead here. 
it puts it, it puts it through. We get the extra sting. I will draw around to the excavated embers I put in. Yeah, it's actually just super fine here, I believe. Right? Yeah, it's cool. We take a sting up top. Great news. I get to play the excavated ember, which lets me take the engraft here. And I'm looking for the razor sharp in the back, of course. I would like very much to chew through this bottom floor now. So we're just going to sting the hell out of it and then play Plink, which kills it. Take an Ember for next turn and play Restore, I suppose. Why not? Sure. I, I think this chews through. We have 110 spikes and 50. Oh my god, we demolish. Who's even... What do you mean? We absolutely crush face here. Wow. This is actually really strong. Okay, if we do this against the Divinity, I think we, we win, right? Because the thing that you have to understand is you have the Animuses, the Animi, Animuses of speed. They're swinging, and they're doing enough damage. And after a few turns... They then just beat the hell out of a unit, and then Spikes will clean up the back lines because they're they're punching the front lines. And the Stings are doing a lot of work too. They're really ruffling up some of these enemies. They also make my draw crazy. Good turn one, by the way. Really good turn one. So important factoid, at 105, the Divinity gets plus one on top floor. But he, he doesn't get his plus one on mid-floor until 110. So because I was playing mid-floor, the 105 changed absolutely nothing. Good turn one Razor Sharp, by the way. Yeah, I mean, we just stay the course. This should actually be significantly stronger because... Well, of a lot of reasons. It should be significantly stronger because I... The Divinity 1 hits multiple times. I had a really good draw order. I had to have the Razor Sharp first. And I think I sting this enemy, actually. I don't mind if they hit a little harder. It's fine. 46 spikes. We should be okay. Yes. So first things first, we must play Animus of Speed here every time. Cleans up the floor. Very strong. I will... Pull the light wings forward here. We could... This next floor is actually concerning. I need to think about that vaguely. I would like... I'm always playing the razor sharp in the back, as always. It, it just is makes sense. I would like to draw cards. But really, the only thing that's really coming up of import here is survivability. Am I taking irrecoverable amounts of damage on this turn? Question mark. I mean, no. We're going to 82. This next floor does 6 plus 48, which is 54 plus 12, so 66. We don't die as long as I see some measure of healing. So I think the answer is I take focus growth here, draw more cards, and... I kill the Light Wings on bottom. The thing is, is that Light Wings is dead. Actually, he actually only hits once, so he's even less scary. So what am I killing then? You could pull the Reflector forward, but I actually think the Steel Wings potentially does more damage to us in Relentless. And he doesn't attack into Spikes is the important factoid here. How much are we doing? This is really hard to measure. I have no clue what our spikes is going to be. I think it's, what, one, two, three, four, five hits. So we gain 10 spikes up front for 56 spikes. So this man's going to be walking up at something like 100-ish life. He's going to still slap me. Hmm. I think I am going to pull forward and kill him here. Doesn't really matter, but... Take the focused growth here, and then we restore into the back. Yeah. We kill most of these enemies very cleanly with these PPUs. Yeah, we again, we kill two enemies here. I need to Razor Sharp. 
I need to Nexus Spike. It's like absolutely critically important. But we leak the entirety of the Steel Wings. He hits me pretty hard. I think I... Sting the Wilt Wings here. It's tough. What do you do from this position? That's really difficult. We're a little slow on the uptake is the problem here. I think killing the Reflector represents more value overall. We kill the two scariest units. If I leak this man, he hits me six times. I take 18 from him, which goes all my pyre armor and two. And then I also take this clipped shaman because how the hell am I killing that for another five? So that's 23 from this floor. Not good, but it does let us accelerate. It's a lot of spikes to be picking up here. I think I need to make sure that the Animus are connecting with a Dark Wings. And there's no way I stop this harvest from triggering, right? I'm going to kill units, so I think it's fine. The Plink is probably the best take here. It's not great, but it's something. And then what, I take Ember Cash here because the hell else do I do? Sure. I'm not happy with it, but it will be fine, I suppose. Oh, this is not good, huh? <laughs> Ooh, buddy. Okay. Do the things you have to do here. What are the things I have to do? I'm having 44 life left. We don't die next turn. Which I suppose is important. Sting. Okay. Have to play the Razor Sharpened back. Sure. I have to play Preserved Thorns here. There's just no universe I don't. It gets a lot of damage around to this dude here. I think I actually have to just slam Furnace Tap here. I need the hit. Just period. And I put the Wildwood Sap into the front. And we hope we can sting out this other thing. Oh, buddy. I think we're dead. In what universe do I ever address this mini-boss? Surprisingly, it's not bad, actually, huh? Draw a sting? I mean, we're eating so much on top floor, though, huh? Like, I think I have to sting him. Razor Sharp goes in the back, of course. It is a lot. You sting middle, I get another 37 into the back. I think we're just dead. This does not ramp fast enough. I think I needed to... What? How do you win this run? How do you win this run? What was the piece that I was missing? You know what it is? You know what it is? Here's the deal. I think I know what went wrong in this run, and I'm actually super okay losing this because this is not something I would have considered. So the extra hit from this Animus of Will is not as important as the Root Split Mask plus playing on top floor. Right? I think that's actually super true. Because enemies just walk by and... Like, I mean, how do I ever kill this Inquisitor? In what universe am I killing him? How does he lose? Ever. The Awoken Hollow Essences just don't really represent enough value here. Yeah, I think that's actually genuinely true. Yeah, fair enough. So, we play the turn to the best of our ability. I think the right draws here are... The right hits here, you'd have to play this... this Ping here. We always lose the Inquisitor, so I'm gonna ping front, which puts another 37 here. You take the packed morsels, you play them up top just to get rid of them, and we put the train steward in, which, you know, one H one damage away from punching and uh, saving me 10 life, but I don't know, maybe some miracle happens. Maybe some miracle happens. We draw enough stings, maybe we punch through. Oof. No, there's no universe. Do we stabilize here? Hell no, we also lose the sentient. 
we're extremo dead. I don't think there's any draw order that fixes this. I did not, this does not ramp fast enough for the divinity. So you needed the root split mask to hit another time. And honestly, genuinely fine with this loss as a result. Truly. I think we had this and I just didn't see what was necessary. And that's really it. You need to take the pivot with just two multi-striking animus of wills, right? In the back. Yeah. The problem is you play top floor. How the hell are you surviving the divinity? Jesus. I would need to, I don't even know. It's tough. <laughs> right? It's just, how do I even describe it? It is difficult. I think we actually could stabilize. I'll draw enough stings next turn to kill this, the Gilded Wings. So if we didn't die to this man, I think we would get it. He goes to four hits. I mean, he obliterates us. But yeah, we also lose the sentience. There's that. And there's nothing I can do about it because these things are... Yeah, these things are rough. So what you would have to do here, of course, is I would have to pull one forward and sting it out, and then we save the sentient. But the problem is I was losing up top floor anyway, so it doesn't actually matter. It's fine. We'll just send it. This is it. It's over. I'm not replaying it. Yeah, cool. All right, fine. A good lesson in how to play the spikes archetype here. We get bonked out. Okay. I'm fine with this loss. We're learning here. We're learning. That is a really interesting setup. And one of the things I think is important to realize about the balance patch in general, and I'm going to go to the run summary to talk you through, is the important thing is that people look at this balance patch. I say people. I mean, I've received comments from folks about this in the past, not on YouTube necessarily, but just elsewhere, Discord places. They see some of the buffs like, oh my God, you gave Animus of Speed and Ability. And they think this is makes them broken. They think that I have made the game too easy or something. If the game is too easy, how the hell did I lose? And the truth is that it, it opens up alternate lines. It opens up things that we've never seen before in the base game. This line does not exist. Spike scaling, right? I think there is a winning line here, right? For sure. But we just did not have it. We didn't get there on this particular run because I didn't identify the needs of the run. And really, yeah, that's that's really it, right? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. So we would have had to solve. How do you do this? You probably have to solve survivability, but how? You dupe that Nexus Spike, and then what? I mean, you play a Nexus Spike into each one of the Animus up top, and they live forever. And then you have to keep the Sentient alive with raw healing. It's not impossible. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. Yeah. Otherwise, I think our line was good, right? I mean, the Stings with the Thorn Fruit, Channel Heart... I think that was potent. We ate a lot of damage on this run, though, and some of it, I think, is... Clipped Guard killed us, right? I didn't even take that trial. That was... That was Party Boys. Yeah, they, they were rough. One big guy just walked and slapped the hell out of me. True. True. All right. I, I don't think there's much else to say here. I think we had the survivability if I had actually played into it on the sentient and that right in the right way on that floor. And we would have been OK. I'm pretty confident. But I just kind of pinged the hell out of that boss and hope for the best. And we didn't get there Four hits. He would have man, that's 56 damage. So you could have also solved this with a ton of pyre health, right? Like 140 pyre health walking into the divinity. But we ate so much. I mean, honestly, the 39 on Talos was really bad. I grossly underestimated our strength there. Also, we just got sent by freaking pushback Talos. Right? She just destroyed us. We lived at one. So interesting. Interesting. All right, cool. Well, that's all I got for you on this particular run. And I'll leave you there. Back on the zero win streak grind. 
So, hey, yeah, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like or a dislike if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.